What's the deal, everybody? We're back once again with another episode of Politics as Usual right here on the Ethos Media Network. Make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe for all the latest content. What we're going to get into right now is um, you guys, if you've been watching the channel as far as this show, Politics as Usual, then you kind of know, you know, one of my aims of this channel is to make people realize how similar the Democrats and the Republicans actually are. Um, not just through policy, but actually in, in what they talk about publicly, what they say, the things they say they stand for, all of these things, right? It will flip flop no matter who's president. So if you have a Democrat in office, all the Republicans will flip on a dime on all of their principles, same vice versa. And this is just a little bit more evidence of that. This is a compilation put together by Matt Orfala. And um, if you go back a few weeks, you'll remember that I put out a video about um, how the Democrats and the Republicans both deny the election, again, depending on who wins. So this is just a, a, a compilation that was put together that, you know, shows all of the quotes uh, from Hillary in 2016 when she lost the election of Donald Trump and from Donald Trump in 2020 when he lost the election of Joe Biden. You're going to see how similar all of this is and why it's not really fair to just, you know, peg one side as election deniers versus the other when they all do it. The only way they can take this election away from us is if this is a rigged election. The election was rigged against Clinton. This election was rigged and we can't let that happen. We won the election. This was an election that we won easily. We won it by a lot. Are you suggesting that you might not accept the results of the election? I have to say, look. Clinton won't rule out questioning 2016 election. No, I wouldn't rule it out. Can you give a direct answer? You will accept the election? I have to see. Would you completely rule out questioning the legitimacy of this election? No, I would not. No, I'm not going to just say yes. Russia hacked the 2016 elections, and they're going to do it again. This is going to be a fraud like You've never seen. The Russians are still in our election systems. Lots of things can happen. I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances. The official was on this morning and said there's no way Trump didn't win, and he told me horror stories. I object because people are horrified. Absolute horror stories. And I object to the certificate from the state of Georgia. And I object to the electoral votes from the state of Georgia. And I object to the votes from the state of Wisconsin. I object to the electoral votes from the state of Wisconsin. We still don't know what really happened, Isaac. I mean, there's just a lot that I think will be revealed, history will discover. Because people, lots of things will happen during that period of time. There was a widespread understanding that this election was not on the level. There is no way you can go through a mail-in vote without massive cheating. You don't win by three million votes and have all this other shenanigans stuff going on and not come away with an idea like, whoa, something's not right here. The election is rigged. Somebody got a ballot for a dog. Somebody got a ballot for something else. Fears of Russia hacking electronic voting machines. I think there was a conspiracy. Trying to rig this election. The Russians hacked our elections once and are likely to do it again. You look at some of the corruption having to do with you. All right. We, uh, we got the picture. So what did you see there? What I saw was Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton saying the exact same thing. That's what I saw. I saw, um, oh shit, gotta get used to the new setup. Um, I saw both sides um, denying the election that didn't go in their favor. That's what I would just saw. I just saw about three and a half minutes of them saying the other side didn't win for reasons X, Y, Z. And reasons X, Y, Z were the same on both sides. Um, so to address Hillary, first of all, you say there is no way that Joe Biden should concede the election. Joe Biden won the election. So were you already under the impression that he was going to lose? Or what was what was that comment? Because that, that's interesting that you would even say that when he won. So that's interesting. That's number one. Number two is um, if you won by more than 300 million or 3 million votes, which I believe is correct, um, in the 2016 election, if you won by over 3 million votes 
and you say, whoa, well, something's not right here if I want more than three million more popular votes, but he still won the presidency. That thing is called the Electoral College, which I know that you're not in favor of getting rid of. Um, so that that's what happened there. That's how somebody can get three hundred three million more votes than their opponent and still lose the election is because uh, the number of human beings voting doesn't actually decide the election land more or less decides the election. What do I mean by that? Well, the argument is that because high, high, uh, heavily populated cities, so the big cities pretty much in any state that you go to, lean more democratic, whereas rural areas lean more Republican, right? Now I'm not saying left wing or right wing, because I think if you ask people on specific issues, you're going to get a mixed bag depending on who you talk to. But as far as the way they vote, I feel like more rural areas, and it's like this in Michigan, even like the more further away you get from Detroit, the more likely you're going to run into Trump voters versus the closer you get to Detroit, more likelihood you're going to run into, you know, Obama voters and, you know, not really so much, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Hillary and Joe, you know what I mean? But like, as far as, you know, like historically speaking, it's and it's pretty much like that in any state that you go to for the most part, right? So the reason I say that land actually decides more of who wins versus people is because in what they decided basically, now granted, this was based off slavery, you know, when uh they, they were counting the slaves as part of the population but not allowing them to vote. And the reason that they did that was to decide how many electoral votes each state gets, right? So again, if the majority of heavily populated cities vote for Democrats the majority of the time, but the key word in that sentence is heavily populated. If you add up the amount of people, I live in Phoenix, not well, you know, the Phoenix area, so if you were to add up the amount of people that live in the greater Phoenix area, meaning Phoenix and its direct suburbs, what you'll find is that population is huge. It's It was 5 million when I moved here 10 years ago, 12, well, almost 11 years ago now. So if they were... um how do you say, uh, you know, if it, assuming, you know, the population's grown since then, right? So that means to me that there's probably, I don't know, five and a half million people now in 10 years, maybe 6 million. You know, I don't know. A lot of people were moving here. You know what I mean? People who lived here were having children. You know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. Children are growing up. You know what I mean? So since, since that's the case and the majority of people live in big cities, if they decide to vote Democrat because that's the culture of that city or that's just how people tend to vote, then that's just what that is. That's just that's more people voting for this. It's the argument is that you're, you're taking away from people's votes because California is so big and there's so many people there that you're effectively taking away the votes from people in Kentucky or, you know, name another like mostly rural state. Right. Indiana, you know, some shit like that, Montana, wherever. So that's why I say land actually has more of a voice than people do, because if there's 10 million people, I'm just making up numbers. I don't know the populations of California and all that right now. But let's say there's, you know, 20 million people that live in the state of California and the majority of them vote Democrat. And then there's, you know, 100,000 in the state of Montana. Why? Why does the person who gets the majority of the votes in this state, not just the state? you know, the electoral number, which is pre-decided, but that's, it hasn't fluctuated at all based on population or anything like that. Those numbers have been the same forever. You know what I mean? Like, I think California gets like, what, 27 votes or something like that. It's been 27 votes for forever, you know? So it doesn't even adjust with population. So the issue then becomes um, this state that doesn't even have that many people in it or this group of states 
that if you add them all together, don't even have as much people as maybe a city on this side of the country. You're 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 giving that an even playing field when in reality, whatever voting or whatever decisions policy wise that are going to be made are going to affect the people over here way more because there's way more of them. Is that you, you guys understand what I'm saying? So basically places that don't have as high of populations essentially end up with way more power than, you know, states with a larger population do. So, and people think that that's like fair, or that's a good thing, you know what I mean? And so that's why I say then land has more of a vote than human beings do in that case. So that's why I make that argument. Um, so that would be how you stop that, Hillary. Um, which again is not something that you're you're interested in, you know. So, um, that's what I would say to you. Now, as far as Trump, you know, um, I think I, I don't even think he believed what he was saying necessarily. I think he was doing what Donald Trump does, and that's stir stuff up. You know what I mean? He he knows how to get people talking. He knows how to stay in the media. He knows how to market himself. That's what he's good at. He did that all the way to the presidency. He marketed himself to becoming president. So I don't even take what he said at face value. And I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, well, you know, you don't think you that this this is expected of you type of type of thing. So but the issue is that when large numbers of Republicans believe this. Or on the opposite side, large numbers of Democrats, you know, believe this, like it just causes so much more polarization in the country than is necessary, you know. Um, so I think uh, Matt Orfila did a wonderful job of, um, you know, clipping that together. He has a lot of other compilations on his channel. Um, you know, there was a different one about a, a particular doctor, you know, who has been uh, <laughs> changing his his narrative on a, a certain um virus that went around the last couple of years if you guys know what i'm talking about yeah so you know that's a another interesting clip um again this is a relatively new youtube channel so you know there's certain things like i don't have a guy at youtube that you know we can talk to and keep us out of trouble and all that kind of stuff so you know for now i gotta watch what i say um but you guys know what i'm talking about so um yeah he does good work so shout out to matt orfila um but yeah, you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. You know what I mean? What do you guys think when you see both sides denying the election? Democrats, when you see that and, you know, you've been calling Trump voters for the last four years, election deniers and all this kind of stuff, da spreading dangerous conspiracy theories. Do you have that same energy for Hillary Clinton? And same question for Republicans who voted for Trump, like. Do you guys have that same energy for Trump, you know, even though, you know, that you had for Hillary in 2016 when everybody was mad at her, you know, for not wanting to concede the election and all that type of stuff? Like, do you have that same energy for Donald Trump or is it OK because that's your guy and, you know, your guy can do no wrong? You know, just let me know what it is, because that's what I see mostly. It's just a bunch of teams like, well, no, this is our guy. So we have to defend him, even if he's wrong. You know what I mean? Or this is our woman. So we have to defend her, even though she's dead wrong. You know, that's what I see mostly. You know, so um, just leave a comment. You know, let me know what you guys think. You know, after seeing that video, no matter what side you vote for, you have to admit there's a lot of hypocrisy on both sides, right? You just got to be more willing to call it out. The more willing we are to call it out is how we can change it. If we just accept what's going on and we just keep saying, well, the Democrats are like slightly eensy weensy, a bit less shitty than Republicans. So and I, I don't even think you can really make that argument. I think they're in a lot of ways worse because they disguise themselves as people who want to actually help you, whereas Republicans tell you who they are right up front. They're like, we don't give a fuck about people. We like business. We like small taxes. We like the military. And if we go somewhere to invade, then that's just, you know, part of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you're poor, it's your fault. Motherfucker, work harder or, oh, well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Republicans 
tell you that up front about themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you choose to vote for that, it's probably because you believe in that stuff to to one degree or another as well. Um, you know what I mean? Whereas, you know, Democrats disguise themselves as like, oh, we're pro-worker, we're pro-union, you know, we're pro-raising your wages, we're pro-taxing the rich, like all of this stuff, you know, but they don't do any of it. You know, they do the same stuff as Republicans do. Like, for example, if the Republicans were to drop the corporate tax rate by 5%, the Democrats might go back into office and raise it by 2%. You see the game, and then the Republicans go back in there and they're dropping by another 8%. And the Democrats might raise it by 4% this time. So every time they raise it, it makes people who vote for them think, oh, good, they're raising, you know, the, the corporate tax rate. They're, they're going to have to kick kick in more, you know, and not be able to do stock buybacks and all this type of stuff. That's incorrect. Because realistically, what's happening is if I start with 10 of something and then you take away six, right now, I'm at four of whatever that thing is. And then you give me three back. I'm at seven now. I'm not at my original 10 that I started with. And then if you take away another six at that, now I'm down to one. And then you add four more. Now I'm to five. Five is still way less than what I started with, which was 10. That's what the Democrats do. And it gives you hope. But then when they actually have the power to actually implement these changes and these things that they say that they care about, they don't do it. You know, the abortion thing, how long have Republicans been running on getting rid of abortion rights? As long as I can remember. That's always been a Republican talking point. Every president that I've been able to vote for, with the exception of Donald Trump, has said that they would codify Roe versus Wade into law. Joe Biden had a full full government of Democrats. He had the Senate, he had the House of Representatives, and then of course he was the president, so he had the White House. He could have did it, chose not to. Now, I ask a lot of people also, does the president have power or no? And and this is what I mean by that. Does the president have power? When Trump was in office, he was responsible for everything evil that happened and everything was his fault. And cool, I'll take that. Like, I'm not arguing with you. But then how come when Joe Biden becomes president, it's oh he's being handicapped by this person and all oh, the president can only do so much and. So is it that Democrats are the only ones that have like rules and checks and balances that they have to follow and Republicans just don't have that? Or like, you know, I'm trying to understand what, what people mean when they say that, like when they say, um, you know, that the president can't just do this and can't just do that. And he doesn't have the power to do X, Y, Z. But then a Republican gets in there and every, every, a lot of the stuff that he wants to get done gets done. He's not doing anything illegal to make those laws pass. He's just making sure that his people are in position to pass the laws they want. If it's unconstitutional, the Supreme Court will strike it down in most cases. So does the president have power or not? That's my question. You know what I mean? He can't only have power sometimes, and especially if he's got a full majority. Same with Obama for the first two years of his presidency. He had a full majority. You know, so these are just things to think about. These are just things to think about. Um, But what I do know is that if you continue doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result, that is the definition of insanity. And I mean, if you lived long enough, you should see that it's not been working. You know, things have not been working. We know what's going to happen with Republicans. We should know what's going to happen with Democrats now. So with that information, do what you will. But this has been Shane G. This is Politics as Usual right here on the Ethos Media Network. Make sure you like, you share, you subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Ethos Media Network. Follow me at Shane underscore Ethos on both Instagram and Twitter. And um, I'll catch you next week. Y'all have a good one now. Peace.